Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way if you keep on the sunny side of life. Hello there. Thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this cabin talk. My name is Joe Martin. I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church in Toledo, Washington, and this is our midweek message. I want to talk to you about three incredibly important phrases that we need to understand, that need to be part of our lives. They will affect everything about your life. They involve what we're going to talk about this weekend is forgiveness. You know, someone one time said forgiveness is everything. And how well you live and how well you love other people will be determined by how well you put these phrases and include these phrases in your life. And all of them begin really ultimately with humility. And that's hard for us. I was thinking about this old song I had to, I had to, um, change the words a little bit because it has a few colorful parts, but you remember this? Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I can't wait to look in the mirror because I get better looking each day. To know me is to love me. I guess I'm one whale of a man. It's hard to be humble, but I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> I think we all have a little bit of that tendency in us. We want to kind of double down even when we, we don't always have it right. You know, the first phrase that is critical in our lives to be able to say to God and other people and most of all, to begin with, with God, is please forgive me. Please forgive me. You know, our friendship with God begins and grows with this phrase, with these words. Now, maybe they're not the exact words, please forgive me, but it's, they're, that's the intent of it. You're saying, like the man said in Luke eighteen thirteen, he said, Jesus, of course, was teaching that there were two men that went up to pray and one was um, very religious and was bragging about how religious he was and how glad he was better than other people. The other, in Luke 18, 13, said the tax collector standing some distance away was unwilling to even lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner, the sinner, not a sinner, the sinner. You know, he wasn't saying exactly that phrase, God, please forgive me. But he was meaning that. He was saying, be merciful on me. Did you know that that's true with God? Our friendship with others, with God and others, is maintained by our ability to have the humility to say, please forgive me. You know, think about your fellowship with God. It's directly related with your ability to confess sin. When you're wrong, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is what he does. He promises he'll do it. These are hard things to do. Sometimes we, our pride, we resist and, but if we are going to be real, these words are going to be real coming out of our life, please forgive me. They are supposed to be hard. The hardness of having to say them is a little bit of a deterrent from behaviors that would put us in a position to have to say them. When you have to face that person and say, look, I was wrong. I'm really sorry. I was wrong. I blew it. 
I'm sorry. It's not supposed to be easy, but it is supposed to be genuine in our lives. So we have to be able to get to our life to be able to say, please forgive me. If you are a person like all of us that, that finds perfection out of reach, then you must learn to use these words many times to keep not just your relationship with God growing, but others. The second word is really important because we hear it from God. I am faithful and just to forgive you, cleanse you and forgive you, forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And we have to be able to say those words too. I forgive you. You know, sometimes we say, well, you know, I've forgiven them and forgiven them and forgiven them. But Jesus said that you forgive people in your heart. Luke 17, 3 says, be on guard. I think he's talking about this tendency to get hard hearted. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. Doesn't mean you never say anything about it, but you say something. And if he repents, you forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times a day, I repent, forgive him. Now, some people say, well, does that mean that, um, that we don't have to forgive people that unless they apologize? No, that isn't what it means. But it means you communicate your forgiveness to them when they apologize. No point in going up to somebody and saying, hey, I just want you to know I forgive you. They haven't seen it yet. Their heart hasn't changed. But you can say it. You're ready to say it because your heart is ready. You say when they ask, you forgive them anyway. You know how I can say that? Because we are to forgive like Jesus forgave. How did Jesus forgive? He was hanging on the cross and Jesus was saying to the Father, this is between him and God, not between him and the people killing him. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. He wasn't talking to them. He was talking to the Father. Now, if any of those people came along later and said, Jesus, please forgive us for our part, of course, he had already, he had already asked for forgiveness for them. And then there's a third phrase that we hear from God. We say, I forgive you. But God admonishes us. He says, you forgive them. You forgive them. That's a, that's a phrase that we have to respond to because it's easy for us to not forgive people. I know. Even little, you know, we're still talking about it in our grudge list. Mark chapter eleven twenty five says, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything, anything, anything against anyone, whew, that's a lot, anyone, anything, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. This last phrase, you forgive them. Oh, we have to respond to that because here's what he says, verse 26 of Mark 11. Look it up for yourself. But if you do not forgive Neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive you your transgressions. You can't have fellowship with them. That's why Paul said this to you and me. You forgive them. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You say, I don't feel like God's very close right now. Do you have a grudge? You mad at somebody or some bunch of people? Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Listen, be kind to one another. Tenderhearted, that means you not hard-hearted. The Holy Spirit fills hard heart, not hard hearts, but tender hearts. Kind to one another, tenderhearted. Listen, forgiving each other just as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. How often and how honestly you use these words are going to determine the kind of person you're going to be and the kind of life that you're going to live, not just on earth, but for eternity. So remember those three phrases. Please forgive me. I forgive you. You forgive them. Those are pretty important things to remember. And you pray for me and I'll pray for you and we'll all grow in this. God bless you and thanks for listening.